welcome all participants thank you for joining us we are starting our webinar now i'm sure you are busy with so many activities but you are taking your time out for this webinar considering the important topic of this webinar the program schedule is like this little changes are there now uh, dr Ar Ar apul goel from your own university he'll be setting up the context of the webinar and then he'll be handing over to professor theobigas this is how the program would be okay I am all again. Uh, Devendra Thakur, National Sales Manager from Informatics Publishing Limited. I welcome all participants for this webinar, Surgical Procedures Made Easy. It's presented by Incision Academy. I'm from Informatics Publishing Limited. We are now 40 year. We are celebrating our 40 years. And uh, during these 40 years, we had all the, we thanked all those who had traveled with us in this passage to knowledge. We started in 1980 by information scientist. Almost four decades happened now. And we thought this during this uh, 40 years of celebration, what is our responsibility towards the knowledge community? So during this lockdown, we had so many things. Three important things were there, what we did, responding to all the knowledge seekers on their queries, problem of accessing the subscribed content from home because all under lockdown, and college, many colleges and universities wanted some content for their users during lockdown, which we opened up the trial for free trial, and we celebrated our 40 years like this. And for accessing the content, we have given all the remote authentication solutions so that they can all the users can access to the content subscribed by the university sitting at home. Many colleges with, where they did not have any content, we offered them the content also on free trials. And then came the part of e-learning. Basically, this was the e-learning area. How the e-learning was made easy in medical community area where they all are our saviors. So we introduced Incision Academy's platform to Indian market. Where this platform has more than 400 surgical courses. You'll be coming to know about it in a while. Uh, thank Dr. Apul for having accepted my request for uh, uh, sharing this presentation and sharing this, uh, uh, organizing this webinar. I request uh, Dr. Apul to take over, please. Thank you so much. Dr. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, thank you, Informatics, uh, for giving our university a free trial of the Incision Academy, which has uh, so many surgical videos. And thank you for organizing this webinar for our university and uh, arranging international speakers. So uh, uh, I'll be giving you the setting and also introduce the speaker. We all understand that uh, the importance of videos in e-learning, especially for surgeons. Uh, the, 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 I think of late, YouTube has become a sort of a go-to place. Any video that we wish to see of any surgical procedure, we often go to the YouTube. But as we all know, videos are on YouTube are not peer reviewed. Anyone can post a video anywhere on YouTube. So the issue with the videos that are available on YouTube are that they are not peer reviewed. So I think there is a scope or a place where you can have good videos, but they are peer reviewed. So they are standardized. 
so i think uh, that is the place where incision academy is playing a good role and uh, now that will have free access so we'll have a free trial and we'll see how it is and uh, videos i think for any surgical branch is a very very important mode of learning actually so uh, without wasting further time let me have the privilege of introducing our speaker dr theo weigers he is professor of surgical oncology and also a co-founder of the incision academy which is based at the netherlands he he is a fellow of the royal college of surgeons of england he is the recipient of european society of surgical oncology award he is honorary member of the dutch society of surgical oncology and many other societies he has contributed about 230 research papers and has contributed 11 book chapters in uh, surgical books he is co editor of the prestigious european journal of surgery he is member of the dutch governmental committee on for oncology and he is one of the editors of the cochrane colorectal cancer group uh, uh, so uh, he started his medical career in tanzania and served as a surgical oncologist and held the department for many years uh, he is chairman uh, of the department of surgery at the university medical center groningen in uh, the netherlands his specialization is pelvic and colorectal surgery and he co-founded the incision academy in 2014 so it's now 6 years old so thank you so much uh, and now i welcome uh, Dr. Theo to share his screen. Professor Theo, can you? Yes, I can. Uh, I can hear you. Thank you for your very kind uh, introduction. Um, it is true. I ended my career as a surgical oncologist, specialized in uh, colorectal cancer surgery and especially in pelvic surgery. but i always remember my time that i was working in tanzania as a general practitioner doing a lot of surgical work um not only in the field of cancer surgery but mainly in obstetrics and gynecology and general surgery including urology so it is my pleasure to share with you my ideas about e learning and the modern way of learning and the second part of the presentation will be just a live to go to the academy so that you can see that it is on real time and and i will show you a few examples and since dr golson has been so kind to introduce me i will focus a little bit on urology as well so to show what we have made for for example prostatectomies So if my if can I I now show my share the yeah. screen sorry yes we can see yeah. it's it's working yeah um incision has a two a few messages and 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 one of them is that standardization of surgery is the key to improve quality um and not only by doing this by ourselves but also using the all the knowledge that is uh, available of all the professionals around the globe so sharing surgical skills is uh, one of the most important part that we like to uh, express to you so our platform can be used to uh, to improve your standardization and you know like dr gual already said we have youtube but we have so many films on youtube where you have no idea what the quality is and i think in our e learning tool our academy we use professionals we share the knowledge and we base our information on international standards in fact international guidelines so just a brief introduction to tell us a little bit what is now in essential in surgery and what is also very challenging these days to to cope with the standards of today 
Well, one of the observations is that we do not have so many best practices. We need a lot of standardization. And one of the reasons for that is that only 30% of all surgery is evidence-based. And most of our experience is, um, is experience-based. But if we share that experience, and if we share the outcome of that experience, then we can improve the surgical care enormously, not by doing more uh, randomized controlled studies, but especially by doing national audits where we compare the way we are doing our surgery and by that improve the, uh, and come to standardization. Now, one of the biggest problems in the world is the shortage of skilled staff. If you look at this graph, and this is an estimation of a couple of years ago, that we need 2.2 million more surgeons, uh, anesthetists, and obstetricians, and OR staff. And this shortage is, is increasing and increasing. So what we have to do is increase the speed of our training. And increasing the speed of training and getting knowledge is possible with e-learning. And it is especially true since our way of education is very old fashioned in many countries still. We, um, it's not scalable. We have the master apprentices where somebody learns uh, how he is doing a certain procedure. Of course, that was working in the old days, but if you have to train many, many people, this is not longer scalable. And it is far too expensive to continue like that. And on the other hand, you see that are what I already mentioned, that we have a widespread use of internet surgical videos. And this has been checked. And we see that, for example, for the cholecystectomy, when you look at all the videos of the cholecystectomies on YouTube, it can be rather clear that the critical point of view of safety is not achieved in many of these videos, they will give you the wrong information. And this, in the end, will also lead to another factor, and that is that the dynamics are changing and that we are learning every day. If we see the number of publications every day, it is nearly impossible to stay up to date these days. And so a lot of knowledge takes a long time to be implemented in surgery. And surgeons, well, usually they say it's my way or no way. And we have to realize that most of the surgical complications are avoidable. And that one of the drivers is poor communication. And we learn from aviation that communication is extremely important to work as a team. And I can give you the example that when we introduced the audit in the Netherlands, the correct audit, we were looking and exchanging results. We were able to improve the uh, post-operative outcome by 50, 70%. So even the mortality was reduced by half by just showing our results together and not being I am the one who knows everything, but we learn from the best teams around the country. Now, what have we done as an academy to improve this? So we have, a, since we have no best practices or often, we have a continuous improvement loop by the feedback of our customers. So when we are looking and getting the feedback, then we can, every time we can improve our videos and our videos and material is every second, third years is rechecked and see if we still have the best way of showing what is the standard at this level. Now I told you already, there is a shortage of skilled staff 
and you can have a comprehensive training. And what is the biggest advantage of this training? That your staff, your, the shortage of your staff is not used for giving lectures, but for training on the job. So the, the learning can be done online and the training can of course still be done with the trainer. And instead of the trainer giving many, many lectures, the trainer should work in the skills lab and in the operation room to train the surgical staff. And we can use many more new items for this. It's for course, it, it should be working everywhere. So the e-learning should work on a tablet, on a computer, on your smartphone, doesn't matter where. And we have most of our films in 3Ds, so you can watch them on your uh, phone in 3D, or you have a beamer with 3D possibilities, and uh, you can project them in 3D, because many of the films are better to understand, it's easier to understand, if you look at 3D. We do also scientific studies for that, and it has been proven that in 3D, you learn faster and more reliant. But that's not the only thing, because you can mimic situations. And I will show, give you a little bit of an example of the virtual reality we have. We have virtual reality where you can learn procedures and you can learn anatomy. Learning anatomy is essential for the, for the students. Learning surgical anatomy is very important for the interns and the residents, and they can use the VR as an instrument for that. And the final thing is that we, and I do not know if this is something of interest for, for your teams, we can also enable optimal working as a team. So team alignment is also part of what is in our academy. And these are our solutions. So we have educational tools and we can split them in five categories and that's all for learning. So we have the introduction, introduction films, introduction to the OR, introduction to anesthesia, the introduction into positioning of the patient. So we have many introduction films, introduction to laparoscopic surgery. We have many introduction films that are not specific for a certain disease but they will bring the, the, the knowledge. And this knowledge is, is, uh, is very important for interns and residents when they have come for the first time to the theater that they have any idea what is happening over there. Now, the second part is, and I will come back later to that, is anatomy. Surgery is anatomy. Without knowledge of anatomical, anatomical uh, structures, it is impossible to have a proper understanding of what you are doing. And I will come back later to that when I explain the step-by-step -step method. Then we have the equipment. We use a lot of equipment every day when we really don't know how to use it. And one of the biggest, best examples is electrosurgery. And you can ask yourself, were you trained as a resident, as a surgeon, to use the electrosurgery equipment in a proper way? Or you just used it and asked somebody else, can you explain a little bit how it is working? And this is now all what you can do. You can be certified to use certain equipment. Now, surgery starts with skills and skills are part of procedures that you can use every time. And it is stitching and knotting, making an anastomosis. All these kind of skills you can use every time in a certain procedure. And then finally, and I will give examples of that, are the procedures. And we have, we have filmed them in different ways. We have filmed many procedures uh, in the anatomy lab because it is so easy to see and expose the anatomical structures better in the anatomy lab than in live situations where there's always blood and difficulties in filming, especially in open surgery. But of course, we have live surgery as well, both open surgery, but also 
laparoscopic surgery and robotic surgery. I will give examples of that. And then the second line is our support tools. I will not pay a lot of attention to it, a little bit, because then we could continue for a very long time and I would not be able to show the academy. And that are competence tracking. So when a certain resident has done a procedure, it can be recorded so uh, that it is clear for the supervisor if the resident did this and how he did it. Then we have video assessment where you can send in your videos and it will be assessed based on the essential steps and the hazards. Then we have the continuing medical education. As soon as you need credit points for your license, you can go to our academy, follow the courses and have a certificate what you can use for continuing medical education as soon as that is allowed in your country. And then we have two other, tea, other uh, elements, that is team alignment and benchmarking. And this is all quality improvement uh, for the team and the student and the intern and the resident. So these are the essential parts of our academy. Now, it is all based on a step-by-step -step guide, what we use every time for every procedure. And we have certain definitions for it. So we have steps and we have sub-steps. And a step is a sequence of actions on different anatomical structures in the same region to reach a goal, which has to be evaluated to continue the next step. Now, I can give you the best example is to open the abdominal cavity. Your plan is you have to do an operation on a certain organ in the abdomen. You have to open the abdominal wall. You are encountering anatomical structures how to do that. So the step is the different actions on the anatomical structures to open the abdomen. And the sub-step every time is an anatomical structure. So here we see the step and we see one and two and three sub-steps. And then you go to the second step after evaluation. And that allows also in the training a resident to perform step one and that an other resident continues with step two if you have a shortage of patients that can be used for training possibilities. And this has been published in the Open Journal of Surgery a couple of years ago. So all our procedures are based on steps and sub-steps and the sub-steps are anatomical structures or implants. And this is why it is so extremely important to have your knowledge about the anatomical structures. So this is introduction. I explained it already to you. General introduction films, introduction to the OR, scrubbing, gowning, gloving, ungowning, layout, draping, positioning, anesthesia, everything that is essential for a young resident or an intern to understand what is happening. And you do not, do, and you do not need your, your uh, trainers and tutors for this. They can learn it do it themselves. And then we show you the anatomy. So we have anatomy. We have the anatomy models and we have anatomy films. And this is the model, for example, of the inguinal uh, area of the lower abdomen. And you can play with it and I can show you live how this is functioning. And I told you equipment, electrosurgery, table settings, basic instrument, disposables, drill and saw equipment, harmonic scalpel, all equipment you are using in it on a day-to-day -day base. And you will be very confident if your resident has shown and has passed the test of a certain equipment and that he is not, not only licensed, but also uh, skilled to do the, to work with this equipment. And then we have the skills where you start. We have now, I think, 135 skills. For example, the approaches of the abdomen, the bowel anastomosis, casting, knots, and here you see on the right side, 
all the examples of the knots. So if you have a certain program and a certain standard in your clinic, and that you say, yeah, for the square knot, I use the left-handed one, but I never use the right-handed one or the right under, then we will provide you with only that fragment, giving you the square knot. If you say the Aberdeen knot is fairly essential for residents, but not for interns, then in the program for the interns, we do not show the Aberdeen knot, but for the residents, we can show it. So here on the left side, you see all our skills, approaches, balance to Moses, casting, upper and lower leg, drains, instruments, not switches, tendon repair, all general skills that can be applied in every procedure. Now, when you look at a certain procedure, you can see that there are many chapters. There's a film in 2D and 3D. We have the step-by-step. -step. We have the background and the preparations. Why are you doing it? We have the anatomy, we have the test, and we have the course description with the learning goals. I will show you live. And then we have, for most procedures, we have a knowledge test where you can, and if you pass the test, you get a certificate. And there are many other ways of using the academy. And this is, for example, with virtual reality. So this is a student that has the virtual reality and can learn the, all the anatomical structures. And now we are working on another VR project and we are working it on, and it will be finished in November when we have 50 surgical procedures that are mimicked in virtual reality. But for students and for residents, we can do, we can provide access by interactive learning. And finally, I showed you, and it will be only briefly that I will mention that is the competence tracking. So depending on the methodology you are using in your country, so that can be either the OCRA, the OSAS, or the DOPS. I do not know in India, it is probably the DOPS or narrative feedback can be used for competence tracking of your residents so that you can see what they have been uh, doing. But you can use that, this competence tracking not only for uh, your uh, uh, residents and specialists, but also for your interns and your house officers and also the midwives because we have a big program for midwifery. So this is briefly the, our academy. So I will stop now sharing my screen for, and then I will go to the academy and show live how you can use the academy. Let me see where the academy is. I have to exit my full screen for a moment. To go to the academy. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, this is, if you come to the academy and I have more possibilities than you have, uh, then you can see courses or anatomy. And like, if you, this is live. So uh, this, is, uh, this is not a film or a PowerPoint presentation, but this is live. So if you look for the anatomy, we have many regions already available. We will add head and neck to it in, uh, uh, briefly. So when you go, for example, to uh, the leg, the, it is, uh, the model is loading. And you can So you can turn the leg. And if you can, if you point on a certain structure, you can see that this is the cluster medial head. 
And this is, of course, there are many models available these days for anatomy. But we have checked every single structure of the model if it is on the correct position with anatomists. So we did a lot of changes to our model and this that was absolutely necessary because otherwise you, there are many mistakes. Like for example, this morning I was looking at the vagal nerve and then you see in relation to the carotid artery that it runs on the wrong side. And of course, when you look at it superficially, it doesn't matter too much, but if you look uh, at it, uh, uh, from a different perspective, then it is absolutely not correct and you cannot learn your students to do the, to do the anatomy in a proper way. So now we go to the courses. And here we have a summary of all the courses. And when you go, for example, to disciplines, and let me now take the example of urology, because Dr. Gold is here. These are the 24 uh, urology cases. So when you look, for example, for the prostatectomy, you can have many possibilities. If you are working in a more, yeah, uh, not so uh, an area where there's not such a lot of uh, of uh, possibilities for laparoscopic or um, robotic surgery, you can, for example, do the open prostatectomy. with animations. Eh? So this is how you free the prostate from the capsule. Now you, you can imagine you can imagine when you want to film this live that this is very, very difficult. So this is also another the line of all the uh, elements. So here we have the step by step. We, here we have the anatomy, both with the 3D anatomy model and some drawings. Here we have the background information, what you want to achieve, the instruments you need, the positioning and all the complications you will get and the guidelines. And if you click on the guidelines, you will have it immediately uh, shown. And then finally, you'll have the test. You know, you, you're performing the test. So if I go now back to the courses, And I go back to your urology. Then I just showed you the Millen procedure for the prostatectomy, but it is also the some countries have more uh, the experience by the Hirchak. But if you want to have it transurethral, it of course it is available as well. Well, and then finally, we have also the robotic uh, approach, this one. I just skip a few little parts, just to give you an impression.
Now, I want to uh, I want to stop. Wait for a moment. So I had to stop the film. So I want to stop my presentation with this now. So I gave you some background of the academy, why it is there, what the quality is, and I gave you one example of how the postectomy is shown in the academy, both with an open and endoscopic and a robotic approach. So I'm happy to answer now any questions. Um, and let me see. Uh, thank you, Professor Thiebo. There is a question from Sapna Yadav. I'll allow her to talk on this. Sapna, you have been unmuted now. Could you please uh, ask your question? Yeah, you're unmuted now. You can ask your question. Sapna, we can't hear you. Could you please be a little louder? Okay, there is one more uh, hand was raised. Let me just open it. In the meanwhile, if uh, Dr. Apul is having any question, because uh, Professor Theo mentioned something about his area. Yeah, I think uh, as he rightly said, Dr. Theo, that uh, millions would be difficult, you know, to have a video recording. So I think uh, animation, you showed an animation for that. And uh, regarding TURP and uh, the robotic prostatectomy, there were, there were live videos. So, and I agree with you, uh, the problem with YouTube videos are that they are not peer reviewed. So anyone can post a video and the technique shown in a YouTube video may not be correct actually. So we surely need uh, peer reviewed uh, content. So where people can see the video uh, and uh, you know learn new skills and improve their surgical technique. And this is especially true because what has happened in India since COVID started, elective surgeries have practically ceased. There's hardly any uh, elective surgery that we are doing apart from oncology or emergency surgeries that we are performing. So uh, students or residents have some time and they can visit these sites and they can learn all these things. So I personally, I don't have any question, but uh, if, yes, if there are any queries from the participants, then. Yes, Dr. Ram Kishan is there who, is the, uh, I've unmuted you. Could you please ask your question? Dr. Ram Kishan? If they have, um, uh, if they have written, uh, you know, the questions, so you can just read uh, yeah. those questions. No, there are no questions right I know. Uh, I'd like to add one, if, if you allow me, one, one little item I did not have time to address, and that is, and that, of course, we have what we say a, a procedure that is accepted by most surgeons. But we are working now on a new project where we can add variations to the standard film. So if a certain surgeon says, yes, but I do it a little bit different, it's not probably evidence-based, but I want to show it, then we can add clips of that specific way. But we can also add, we are also adding now clips when there are variations caused by patients or disease or anatomical structures. So for example, if you do colon surgery and you have a double ureter, that, it should be a, that is a risk. And those clips are, we are now trying to add these, all these additional clips to a few procedures already, get experience with it, so that the community can have more contributions and more share their knowledge with our academy. So 
so uh, i think uh, there won't be many questions because essentially this was just a you know a overview of the institution academy actually so till the time we use it for some time i think i don't think there'll be much many questions you know okay so yeah. uh, uh, if there are no questions uh, if uh, how do you, dr apul how do you want to take it forward shall we open the panel and let them uh, uh experience the platform and then come up with the suggestions and recommendations for this will that be a good yes, approach yes that is what we have thought that you will give us a free trial maybe for a month or two months and then we'll see how the response is and uh, let us see what we can do for it perfect okay and yeah, i'm well, always very really happy uh, sorry i'm always very happy to answer specific questions about procedures if you have questions about it remarks uh if you do not agree or you just agree i'm very happy to you I, you can send it directly by email to me and i can answer that and uh, and explain it sure yeah. charles do you have to say anything yeah i just would like to thank firstly uh indeed uh, dr guel for allowing us to present this uh, to so many people over 130 on the call so much appreciated. Uh, I believe that the trial is uh, running at the moment. Um, so I encourage you all to go to the platform, uh, consult us at Incision at in info at incision.care or consult uh, Informatics Global directly uh, for support. Uh, as Professor Theo said, we very much would look forward to hear from you if you would like to if you have uh, suggestions, also suggestions for uh, procedures you feel are mostly uh, needed, skills uh, courses which are mostly needed in your setting. Uh, if there is faculty uh, on the call, uh, we do have um, a specific program uh, functionality at Incision so that we can support your first, second, third or uh, uh, final years of your uh, program so we'd love to look into your educational programs your residency programs your curriculums and see to what extent we are able to uh, to support them already if there is gaps in what we have and what you'd like to uh, to offer from an educational or training point of view we indeed like like uh, to know that and engage with you so that we can make uh, the, the academy stronger and, uh, and more relevant uh, to you. Uh, I think this was all from uh, from my side. Uh, maybe as an as a final note, we have indeed uh, started to bring it to market uh, some uh, some three three and a half years ago. Uh, we add new countries and new hospitals and medical faculties on a monthly basis. We have reference projects in uh, in Asia Pacific in india in hong kong in taiwan in indonesia but also in uh, in europe so we operate in low resource and in high resource settings yeah we very much hope that we can uh, start a partnership uh, with you and i leave it to uh, to informatics global and the vendor to you locally on the ground but we hope to uh, to obtain your feedback in the next uh, two weeks or so and then maybe have another call and see how we can if you're interested to uh, support your uh, education and training activities. Uh, thank you also uh, for allowing us to, to present this to this such a large uh, audience. Thank you so much, Charles, for your kind words. Uh, definitely this uh, trial will help us in getting the good feedback from the participants and the residents there, and they might give the recommendations to Dr. Apul Goyal. Thank you, Dr. Apul Goyal, for uh, uh, having this presentation in a short notice. Thank you so much for your kind uh, gesture and i must thank professor theo uh, through his you know uh, busy schedule he really take out uh, taken out some time for all of us thank you so much and finally thank you all participants uh, more than i could see 140 participants were there thank you so much all for your active participations and i am sure you must have liked this uh, presentation and the demo i request all the participants the professors and uh, all the interns and uh, residents to really go through this platform thoroughly, give your recommendations to the library so that they can take it forward. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Bye. 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 Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.